Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, we're gonna be removing the valve cover, uh, spark plugs, ignition coils, the vanos, and other sensors off of this M54 that we're disassembling. So this engine, like I said in previous videos, came out of a 2001 BMW 330 convertible. The reason we're taking it apart, it had overheated and it pretty much has no compression in most of the cylinders. So we're just gonna go and take it apart and see how bad the damage was, if it's repairable, and that way I can show you guys how most of the stuff works. So as you can see, I've already removed two of the ignition coils and spark plugs. We're gonna go and remove the other four. So first what you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, unhook all the ignition coils. And depending on what your engine you have, uh, you might have a different style ignition coil. If you have a triangular one, you just lift the little tab up and then you pull out and that should release the connector. So on here, we'd have to just release the clamp and pull the connector out. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and remove this whole harness. In order to remove it, you're gonna have ground cables attached. On this one, we only have one. On the other style of harness, you're gonna have two. The ground cable is held in with the eight millimeter nut. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Now to release the rest of the harness, you're gonna see it's held in with a few clips, or more like tabs. So just pry on the tab a little bit, and you should be able to release it. You wanna be very careful, because if you break this tab, it's actually right on the valve cover. So you really can't replace that tab without replacing the entire valve cover. And the other side goes to the DME. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove these ignition coils. They're held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. Now you can just pull them out. And you see these are in really bad condition. Now we're gonna go and remove the valve cover itself. And this is also held in with 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go and remove these ground straps first. They're held in with eight millimeter nuts. Now the rest of the bolts are 10 millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and take them all off. Now that we have all the bolts off, we're gonna go ahead and remove this valve cover. If, if it's not coming off, you, you, should, you should be able to just lift it off. If it doesn't, you can use like a rubber mallet or something and just tap it very, very lightly and that should be able to raise it up the rest of the way. So this is the actual valve cover gasket that is prone to leak on the E46s or any M54 engine for that matter. And these are little spark plug uh, grommets as well. These also tend to break and leak. Uh, what these will do, they'll leak oil right into your spark plug. So that'll, that can cause misfires and whatnot. And this will actually, you might even see drips. You'll smell it inside the car whenever you have the heater on and stuff like that. And it can also cause a vacuum leak, uh, which will also throw a check engine light. So you wanna always replace your valve cover gasket whenever it's leaking. And I have a video on how to do this. Uh, I'll link it down below, that way you guys can go ahead and reference it if you need to. Now we're gonna go in and remove this camshaft sensor. It's held in with a five millimeter hex.
now we're going to go and remove this vanos we're going to start out by removing these two hex caps so these hex caps are eight millimeters Now you're going to want to use a needle nose plier and remove the plastic cap. Now we're going to remove the two T30 bolts inside of this uh, where the cap was on both sides. These are both left hand thread which means you have to turn it uh, clockwise to loosen it. You want to make sure that you are perfectly in the bolt before you try to turn it so you don't strip it. It helps to have a magnet. That way you can just, once you have the bolt, you can just magnet it out. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the actual unit itself. So make sure you have where you hook up the engine, that removed. Make sure you also have this line disconnected. And then we're going to start off by taking off this 13 millimeter stud. Then we're going to remove the rest of the 10 millimeter nuts. Now we're going to go ahead and bag this. That way when we pull it out, all the oil doesn't leak everywhere. And that is how you remove the Vanos. I'll make a separate video on how to actually take off uh, the, all the seals and replace them. That will be in a separate video. But that's pretty much how you remove all that. Now we're going to go in and remove these, this camshaft sensor as well. Uh, these coolant lines and this crankshaft sensor on the bottom. We'll go in and pull all those off and the dipstick as well. The dipstick actually just lifts off once you unplug or unbolt it from right here, which is a 13 millimeter bolt. First we'll take off this camshaft sensor. Is held in with a five millimeter hex bolt. Now we're gonna go and remove this coolant line. This one's held in with a 10 millimeter nut up here. And then we have 13 millimeter bolts uh, right here and right here. There's one more 13 millimeter bolt for this line on the bottom. And it's got a bunch of O-rings on here which makes it hard to pull out. And these, I would never recommend reusing them. Always buy them new. Especially as you see this plastic. It's a hard plastic, it's gonna crack over time anyways. If you have an intake manifold off, go ahead and replace them. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this crankshaft sensor, which is also held in with a 5mm hex. And if you're taking all these sensors off, go ahead and replace them. Also try to buy new hardware whenever you are going to replace them. That way, if one of the bolts strips or something like that, you don't really have to worry about it when you're already doing the job. Now we're going to go ahead and remove both of these sensors. There's only one connector for it, but there's two sensors. They're held in with 13mm bolts. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this temperature sensor, at least that's what I think it's called. It's the coolant temperature sensor. It's a 22 millimeter, uh, I guess you would call it a nut, but you're going to have to use like an open ended wrench to get it. We're going to go ahead and remove this bracket which is held in with a 13 millimeter bolt. Now all we have left on this side is this engine mount arm which is held in with four 13 millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and pull those off. We're gonna go ahead and remove this passenger side engine mount 
uh, arm as well. This is what you would, you would have to remove this if you're doing like header work or anything like that with the, with the engine still in the car. Uh, and it's only held in with four 13 millimeter bolts, just like the driver's side. Only thing you have to remember is which bolts it goes with. So there's, uh, this engine was used in numerous BMW models. So they have different configurations where you can move around the arm or use a different type of arm depending on what car you're putting it in. So on here, we're just gonna go and remove these four and this is for E46, just in case you guys need it as a reference. So as you can see, this little oil runoff that's uh, happening on this side of the block, that's where the head gasket's actually blown and it's allowing stuff to leak out from there. So as you can see, there's just a little residue left over. And then right here, this is a little reference for anybody that needs it. This is the actual drain for the coolant on the block itself. So if, you want, if you're draining the block, uh, the coolant in the block, you have to remove this and then it will just drain out. And this right here is the actual head gasket. You can see part of it right here. And it sits between the block and the head. And the only, only other thing that we have left on the bottom is this oil pan. And then we have the crank pulley right here, which I'm gonna try to remove now. All right, so we're gonna try to remove this crank pulley. Uh, it's actually a 22 millimeter nut or a bolt, 22 millimeter bolt. And what you're gonna wanna do before you remove this is put the engine in TDC, which is top dead center. So there's a mark on the pulley itself and then a mark on the block. And you just, you just line it up and then you can try removing it. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go and loosen this bolt with this impact and see if we can get it to loosen up. And this bolt is not reverse threaded. So just normal lefty loosey. And the impact that I used is a half inch from Harbor Freight. I think it was like $60. It's an electric one, you just plug it in and then you can use it. I've actually used this one to remove the bolt off of a Range Rover as well. And it actually works really well at removing really, really tough, tight bolts. There's the bolt. And as you see, it just slides on with this groove. There's a groove on the actual crankshaft that it lines up with right there. So whenever you're putting it back on, just make sure you put it on with the groove, otherwise it won't go on. Now this is the last bracket that's on here. Uh, it's held with 10 millimeter bolts. And this is actually what you route the O2 sensors and then some of the lines for here that go through this little connector as well. So let's go and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts. Right, so that's it for today's video guys as you saw we we went ahead and removed the valve cover the ignition coils the harness for the ignition coils then we also removed the vanos uh, the various sensors around the engine brackets and then the crank pulley someone was wondering how i was going to remove that crank pulley the main reason they were wondering is when this is actually in the car uh, it's already very difficult to remove because it's on there so tight and then with it being out of the car there's not really anything giving it any like resistance for you to use like a breaker bar or something. So they make a special tool for it. It's called a crank pulley holder. Uh, and that will pretty much hold the crankshaft while you're able to go ahead and loosen that bolt. But the best way and the easiest way to do it is using an impact. If you can't use a half inch impact to get it off, they also make three quarter inch impacts as well. And like I said, it's a 22 millimeter bolt. So just get an impact socket before you do anything. And even if you're gonna be using any large breaker bars, Make sure you use an impact socket, that way you don't break your sockets. So that's it for today's video guys. In the next video we'll be removing the head. Uh, we'll also probably, if we have enough time in that video, we'll remove the oil pan as well. That way, the well, only thing we'll have left is just the block. So let me know if you guys want me to remove the camshafts or just leave the camshafts on and remove the head. Whatever you guys decide, I have the tools to lock, uh, lock the cams in and I've got all the stuff for timing and everything. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.